Hello, and welcome to the third course on BitBadges development and introduction to BitBadges. So this course will go a little more into, you know, integrating with BitBadges and integrating BitBadges into your application. So whether that is using the BitBadges API, SDK, and other developer tools, um, implementing sign-in with BitBadges, or creating custom plugins on your end that can integrate into the BitBadges site. Um, for this initial lecture, we will focus on getting started with the BitBadges API. So, um, to get started, go to the docs.bitbadges.io and go to the API tab um, to follow, follow along. So the API can be used for free um, with pretty strict rate limits at the moment. Um, well, I shouldn't say for free because with an API, API key, it's still free, but without an API key, you can use it with some strict uh, rate, rate limits. With an API key, you get a little more um, leeway. Um, so we do recommend getting an API key. And by to get an API key, what you can do is you can just go to the developer portal and just simply sign up for an API key. So for example, we just create the API key, you'll get the key here, copy it, store it in a safe place, and then um, you're able to use the API key by just setting a header with X API key. Um, and yeah, so as you see here, you are now, you can now access the BitBadges API. Super easy, um, completely free. And yeah, so with all requests, you'll just specify this API key in your headers. And if you need to rotate the key, just click the rotate button there or delete the key. That's all managed in the developer portal. So a couple things about the API. Um, we use like stringified number types where possible over HTTP to avoid losing precision. So this is typically because the blockchain deals with numbers that might be above the maximum safe integer, especially in JavaScript. So we just use a stringified version. Um, you, we have SDK functions to convert as needed, um, the responses as needed. So speaking of the SDK, if you want to, you know, interact with the API using an SDK, a fully type, TypeScript compatible, um, just go ahead and import it from, install the NPM package, bitbadges.js SDK, and then import the API object and configure it with your, you know, API key. Um, your convert function will be like number, the number function, big into five function, or so on, um, with your desired format of your response. So we recommend using um, at least like big int, big integer because you don't want to lose precision but if you want if you want a little more friendly experience you might want to use javascript numbers or strings or so on and all you have to do is just call the bitbadges api dot whatever function um, you might need or are trying to target so it'll um just view the autocomplete or view the types for the inputs and it'll walk you through that process If you want to see all the types, um, you click the typed SDK types and you can see everything here, I think. Yeah, so you can see all the functions here and it'll walk you through every single one if you want to see or um, if you want to see it, all the routes in a more um, open API standard, you can go to this Bitbadge Stoplight documentation and this will explain everything from like what's needed for each route, what can group them in a pretty I think it's a pretty slick interface. So you can see, like for example, if you want to get accounts, you just do this, go to this endpoint, it gives you the SDK equivalents. Um, make sure you have your API key and then like tells you what the request body should be and then tells you everything you can expect from the body, the responses and stuff. It's pretty complete and thorough. Um, and yeah. Most of the stuff will actually not need you to have like user authorization. So we envision that most use cases actually will not. Um, so for example, like accounts are public, badge balances are public, collections are public, activities public, um, stuff like that. Um, if you if you want to get into certain things like um, maybe you know sending claim alerts on behalf of users or create, managing attestations or private lists or something like that, then you might have to. Um, use the gain OAuth authorization from the user. 
we'll go into that in a later episode. It uses the same interface as signing with bit badges. Um, so um, yeah, we'll explain that in a later episode. But again, for most use cases, I don't think you will need um, actual user authorization. The only thing required will probably be the API key. Even um, even claims can be audit completed in a way that you don't actually need authorization from the user because maybe you use the um, password approach. So instead of you know having the user be authorized, you just the authorization is the password, and you can trigger it by use of the password instead of you know authorization. So just a roundabout way that you don't actually need to get implement all that stuff. A um, couple notes on like the formatting and stuff. This is our typical error response if you're error handling, and um, a lot of requests are kind of bookmarked with um, so pretty much we'll return a pagination object with bookmark and has more, and then pretty much you specify the bookmark from the previous request to get the next page. So yeah, if you I'll leave this as an exercise for you to go and explore all the routes, all anything you need. Um, you can also, so I, everything that like is on the blockchain can be obtained through our API. But if you also need a, you know, more, if you want to get the core blockchain information, you can also use the blockchain, the REST API. Um, it's a little different, as you see here, but it's more the on-chain how it's stored on chain as opposed to how we index it off chain. Um, but yeah, I'd recommend getting started with the API for getting data that you might need from our end and handling it and everything if, if that's what you're trying to implement for your application or use case or so on. And lastly, I just want to note that there's a bunch of tutorials, a bunch of documentation, um, and also you can use it via other tools such as like Pipedream or Zapier bunch of different ways that you can interact with the API. It's pretty flexible, and if you need help, uh, please reach out.